What's going on everybody? Kenny Baum is in the building and today I want to talk about this secret character because up until this point as I'm recording this video nobody has found anything. Not a secret, not a hint, not a clue, nothing. Or has the secret character already been found? This is something I've seen going around since about a week after Chaos Reigns was released but I kind of looked past it because I was like hmm that can't be it. But being that nobody found anything yet, I think this absolutely can be it. So today, we got to talk about it. But first, I got to give a big shout out to everybody who's been showing love to these videos here lately because we've been hitting over 500 likes without me even setting it as a goal. And that helps this channel out tremendously. So thank you. But don't forget to smash that subscribe button, especially if you don't want to miss any updates on Mortal Kombat 1. Now let's get into it. Man, man, boy, they coming now. All right, so we head to the website formerly known as Twitter, where we have this post from my boy Tim Thacker1222, the Mortal Kombat dad. He says, See Shang Tsung, Pink Ninja throwing sides. Hmm, could it be Pink Floyd? So, as I'm sure everybody already knows, Shang Tsung has moves where he can turn into other characters. We've even seen him turn into Noob Cybot before Noob Cybot was even announced. But I believe we saw these ninjas then as well, if I'm not mistaken. Where you at, noob? Alright, so there we got a male katana. That's interesting, right? A male katana. Hmm. <laughs> a male Molina. We got Tremor. Yes, after looking at one of my previous videos, I did remember correctly. So Shang Tsung actually mimics all of the ninjas. He does Noob, Saibot, Reptile, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, but he does Melina and Katana as well. But instead of turning into a woman when he turns into Melina and Katana, he turns into a blue ninja and he turns into this pinkish ninja. So that pink ninja is not Pink Floyd. That's why he's throwing sides. This is actually just Shang Tsung portrayed as Melina. And also by playing that previous video, I revealed the fact that my lighting is cooked right now. But don't worry, I'm working on it. Now, before Mortal Kombat 1 came out, Ed Boon said there would be one new character in the game. And it completely missed me, the fact that it was Janet Cage. But this time, I don't think there's nothing that could have missed me because that secret character has still not been found. We're running around here playing the Towers of Time, finishing up these character tower endings, finishing invasions 100%, but nobody has ran into the secret character yet. Tim, I'm sorry, buddy, but we got to keep looking because the hunt continues. But the good news is there's still a chance that this secret character is not a pink ninja. But some more good news, we haven't done Mortal Kombat hot takes all week, and right now is the perfect time for us to get some done, so let's jump into it. Alright, so we didn't hit hot takes last Sunday, and I don't believe we hit any last Friday either, so it's been a while. Let's see what y'all got going on in here this week. Alright, let's make sure we got new first, newest first. Boom! We got Megastar 14. Who is Floyd in Mortal Kombat? Listen, Megastar, I'm going to tell you right now, it's nobody. It's a rumor. Everybody's going with Pink Floyd as this secret character. And personally, for me, y'all, I still don't think that's it. I do not think they would hit us with a Pink Ninja. Yo, what is this? Really hot take. I'm going to make Kenny blow his head with this one. Whoa. True living, you got to relax. But it makes sense that Hanzo becomes... Oh, boy. Oh boy, here we go with this narrative. It makes sense that Hanzo becomes the new Sub-Zero. No, 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 no. I don't even want to finish this because that can't be it. Think about it. I have this head cannon. What if Liu Kang realized that the only way Hanzo lives in peace and Harumi never gets killed is if Kwa Liang takes Hanzo's place as Scorpion? You know what? That makes sense because by making Scorpion and Sub-Zero brothers... Scorpion's not going to want to really kill Sub-Zero, which I don't know, because in Chaos Reigns, Qualying had some pretty deep hate for Bihan. He didn't even want to go save him, so I think that Scorpion Mano might just be pure evil. I don't know. 
And Hanzo becomes the new Sub Zero. Uh, 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 uh. This makes two big things happen. It honors the brotherhood Hanzo and Kuan Liang had in Mortal Kombat 11, but creates the student teacher dynamic in the new timeline, and we get another Sub Zero. So I will say this I don't want this to happen. Hopefully, somehow the tower ending, everybody's tower ending can be canon. Just scrap Noob Cybots because we got to turn them back to Bihan. We cannot have Noob Cybot running, going crazy in the Lin Kuei. I just don't like it. But you know what? I'd rather Hanzo somehow become Sub Zero than Frost. Keep Frost, Frost. Yuck, man. Yuck. I don't know True Living. This one has got me conflicted because when I think about who's going to be Sub-Zero in either the next Mortal Kombat or when we see another expansion, if it happens, it kind of sickens me because I think it should have stayed as Bihan. All right, let's go ahead and get this one. How do I always land on the same one? Out of 450, how do I always get the same ones? All right. Wampa 25. Story was good, not great. Aftermath was better. Towers of Time are a great change. New characters are great. Animalities are amazing. That is a great Chaos Range review there. So, yes, the story was good, but it wasn't great. I agree. I love the stuff that was going on with our characters from Liu Kang's timeline, but, you know, the other stuff I really didn't care about. Aftermath was better. Aftermath felt special. Just because Fire God Liu Kang popped up. It was such a big moment. And then the end with them give, uh, with them giving us that choice to choose who kind of takes the win. I really did like that. But you know what? If the rumors are true. Again, these are rumors. I don't want you guys to run around here saying we're going to get another story expansion. Because that is not 100% yet. If it happens, I think that's where we get our big Mortal Kombat 1 moment that leads us into the next Mortal Kombat game. Because this one's supposed to last for a long time. So that would make sense for them to continue the story. But again, I think these stories probably cost a lot of money to make. So I don't know if they're going to want to keep that going. I hope they do. That way y'all can complain about them some more. But hopefully we get one and it's grounded in Liu Kang's new universe. Surrounding General Shao. Turn him into Shao Kahn. Show us him tearing down Outworld. I would love to see it. All right, um, Elon Covington says DLC could have been better. Um, I mean, what part of the DLC could have been better? Are you talking about the story? Are you talking about... Because I think everybody, everything else is perfect. I love the Towers of Time. It's a great addition, even though those towers were already in the Gateway Mesa. Just putting them like they were in Mortal Kombat 11, I think adds a lot to it because it makes me want to play them a lot more. I really don't like the craziness of the seasonal tower, but the fact that it gave you 50 points every time you did it actually made me jump in there and play it. But now that they've nerfed it down to like 30 points every time you win, that's what I'm not playing. But I still have fun going through the hardest tower and just beating it back to back to back because it's brain dead content. You just turn the podcast on, play through the tower, and get your points. And that's honestly how I like to play games sometimes. I don't like to think too much. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next one. Raiden TR. I still don't bought it. I still haven't bought it. Is it worth it? Um, I would definitely say it's worth it. I mean, it's objective based on your pockets, obviously, because it's not cheap. But um, you know what? The story, I don't, I don't regret buying it. I love having Cyrax, Sector, and Noob. I'm a collectionist or a completionist, I guess you would say. I need my roster to be complete. So even if they put mocap in this thing, unfortunately, I'm going to be forced to buy them. So if you're like me, I say get it. If not, and you already seen the story and you don't want the characters, I mean, hey, chill. Use your favorite character. It's all good. And before anybody says anything, yes, WB did give me a free copy of Chaos Reigns, but before I even knew they were going to give me a free copy, I had already bought it. It was already pre-ordered on my Xbox. The free copy went to my PlayStation. All right, so Ghost Runner 17263 says 40 pounds is outrageous. So we got some more people talking about the price of it all. Um more 7770 says the ninjas have too many skins other characters deserve them way more melina has too many skins she almost has nine skins when half the roster skins are story skins or ood slash uol 
Well, more 7770, the most popular characters in Mortal Kombat are the ninjas. These are all of our throwback characters who have been here since Mortal Kombat 1. So, I mean, I can definitely understand them getting the skins. Now, should Reiko get some love? I mean, how many looks does he really have that we can go off of? Should Baraka? Baraka should definitely get some love, so I'll give you that. But who else? I mean... You know, keep giving us those Sub-Zero skins and give me Sub-Zero for Mortal Kombat Deception. So keep those ninja skins coming, NRS. All right, let's get one more because I don't want this video to go too long. All right, eyes closed. Whichever one we land on, we'll take it. Let's go with this one. Commander Gree, 41st Elite, says, The story was incredible. Love the characters they picked for the chapters, except Tanya. Should have been smoked. Yes, it should have been smoked, and he should have died. The story felt as long to me as Aftermath. It was about as long as Aftermath. I think it might have been like 20 minutes shorter, but not much of a difference at all. Loved how easy it was to start making baby combos for all three characters. It was just a good 8 out of 10 DLC. If they had added Ghostface now or before Halloween, it would have been a 9 out of 10. You know what, Commander? I like it. We're ending off on some positivity because we got, let's see, Easter Bon Rizzotto. 2103 saying 1 out of 10, we're going to cancel Christmas on them. That's probably a Tekken fan in here trying to do it up. But I think it's all good. Uh, Commander, I love the take. 8 out of 10. You know what? I can see it. If you're counting Towers of Time, all of the characters and everything together with the story, then I think I would go 8 out of 10 as well. But how could you forget animalities? The big animality return is a 10 out of 10 in itself. But thank y'all for tuning into this video. Don't forget to drop a like on it and smash that subscribe button if you have not already. Bomb Squad, let's get to that.